Hello dear friends, it's Tracy here to share a new tutorial with you as we create this rusty vintage art panel. It's a full project tutorial with an emphasis on rust. In this video, you'll learn a technique for this rust paste effect using paint and sand, create a grungy industrial metal effect on gears and these die cut rotor blades, arrange rusty elements to create this vintage car panel and add texture with microbeads and prills. I would be delighted to hear from you in the comments below. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I thought I would twist things around a little and start with a couple fun techniques involving cogs and gears. First, let's transform this little birdie chipboard piece with grungy faux rust. I just adore the variety of shapes and sizes of cogs here. They are snipped apart and yes, this leaves some flat edges but I plan to tuck them into layers so the edges will be hidden. You can buy rust paste, but I wanted to use what I have on hand. I was feeling intrepid and just decided to play. It's not always the case, but the first thing I tried gave just the results I was looking for. I'm so happy to have this opportunity to share this fun technique with you. Start by applying a nice thick coat of Little Birdie Black Gesso onto the chipboard. Use a dabbing motion rather than brush strokes to leave a nicely textured surface. While the gesso is still wet, randomly sprinkle on some sand, heavier in some areas and lighter in others. It's okay if it's a little clumpy because we are going for an uneven, rusty surface. The gesso will act like glue to hold the sand in place. I'm keeping this part of the video at a slower tempo than normal so you can get a better look at how to do this technique. Feel free to use the YouTube playback speed tool to speed things up if you wish, or slow it down if you need more time to see what I'm doing. Use a heat tool to dry. You may not know this, but wet acrylic mediums and paint will bubble up if overheated, so I keep the tip of the heat tool close and leave it in place until I see bubbles form. Dab on another layer of gesso to cover the sand, then heat again, forming even more bubbled texture as you go. We're really developing depth in the texture with dabbed on gesso, sand, and bubbled paint. Rust and patina can be found in a myriad of colors and textures. I have a fun story about my inspiration for the particular colors I selected to achieve rusty goodness on these gears. I adore rust. I'm always on the lookout for discarded rusty items and have quite a little collection of grungy washers and other rusty bits I picked up along the way. One day I was walking through a parking lot and there it was. Lying on the ground was the most gorgeous rusty piece of metal. My heart started racing with excitement. The depth of colors and textures and the unique shape were simply amazing. I had no idea what it was, but this discarded rusty gem went home with me that day. When I showed this exquisite piece of rust to my husband, I discovered that it was a brake pad of all things. It's amazing how rust can transform a mundane brake pad into a thing of beauty. This lovely piece became the inspiration for my rusty gears. Let me know if you adore rust or have a rust story of your own in the comments below. I like to work on a craft mat for this technique. The painted gears pull off the surface nicely and the dried paint can be scraped off to clean the mat. Select three colors of acrylic paint that look like rust to you. I'm using burnt umber, yellow, and bright orange, but any similar colors will work. If your rusty inspiration is different, choose a combination of colors that will result in the look you're going for 
pour out a dab of each onto scraps of packaging. When I finish a pack of craft supplies, I cut the plastic packaging into pieces to use as disposable paint palettes. This leaves less mess to clean up, and I feel better about getting one more use out of that packaging. I still have paint on my craft mat where I'm working to clean up, but it's nice not to have those paint petals to take care of as well. For this technique, you'll want to mix the paint colors as you go. I started out with brown and soon realized that it needed to be lightened and more red, so added some of the orange color. I'm mixing the paint on my brush as I go, rather than blending up a large pool of paint. This way you get natural variations in the color, like you would see on a rusty piece of metal. Continue to use a dabbing motion rather than brush strokes. Speaking of brushes, be sure to use an old, inexpensive brush for this technique. Sand has sharp edges that will damage the bristles, and the dabbing motion isn't great for a brush either. I have several brushes set aside just for using with harsh techniques and mediums. While the brown base coat is still wet, go back and randomly add touches of orange in areas where rust would naturally occur. This wet on wet paint technique will allow the colors to blend into each other like you would see with rust. You can even spritz the wet paint lightly with water to encourage blending. Go back in and add touches of yellow on or near the orange. If the yellow is too prominent, you can tone it down with a little more orange. I'm painting one gear at a time to make sure the paint stays wet as I'm working. Here's a paint tip. Try to pour out the amount you need for the project at hand. You can always add more if needed. I used to return paint back into the bottle until I found out it can cause contamination. I lost a jar of art medium to mold and learned my lesson. If you want to put those leftovers to good use, keep an art journal handy and use the excess paint to start a background for your next journal page. I'm accenting this project with gears. To add visual interest, I'm using gears three ways, with rusty chipboard, faux metal die cuts, and gears fussy cut from the fabulous Classic Gentleman image sheet. Next you'll learn a faux metal technique that's so simple, yet really adds a lot of punch to any industrial project. Here you see that rusty brake pad and a metal washer alongside the chipboard gears. It's not easy to tell the difference, is it? For this faux metal technique, I cut gears with thin chipboard using the Little Birdie Cogs and Wheels die set. Little Birdie metallic paints are packed with mica and have amazing shimmer. I wanted a darker grungy color, so I thought I'd try mixing black gesso with tawny glint, a lovely coppery color. I wasn't sure if the gesso would block out the mica, but as it turns out, this combination gives a fabulous industrial metal effect. Off camera, I also experimented on a few gears using fired brick, which turned out quite similar to the copper blend, and I ended up using both on the panel. I started out by adding copper to the black, but it was darker than I wanted, so I switched gears, no pun intended, and added less of the black gesso to a pool of copper paint. I want a smooth finish on these gears, so use brush strokes rather than the dabbing motion used for the rust technique.
Once I had the first coat of paint on, I decided to go a little darker with the second coat. And that's it! Such a quick and easy technique. My husband's a car guy, so when I looked through the Classic Gentleman paper collection for the first time, I just knew I would have to create him a birthday card with that vintage car image. As I was planning the card, I got to thinking. I thought about that rusty brake pad and how cool it would be to use it for the card. It turned out to be the perfect size to showcase the car image. Here's the thing about brake pads, though. They are rather heavy, so that left me with a dilemma. It would be much too heavy for a card, so I decided to create a panel instead. Creativity is such a beautiful thing. I just want to encourage you to embrace your ideas, dream, and think outside the box. Be adventurous and try new things. Do what makes you happy, and don't worry if you've ever seen it before. No, I never saw a brake pad used in art. But you know what? It doesn't matter, because I see the beauty in it, and I hope you do as well. Here are the three rusty found objects I'm using on the panel. I found a sturdy cardboard piece that I cut to the 5 by 7 inch size I had planned for the card. The edges of the panel will be showing and I want them to be black, so I painted it with black gesso. I used repositionable tape to adhere it to a paper scrap. This gives me something to hold on to while applying the gesso. I could have painted just the edges, but I find that I get very little warping when I fully paint the front and back of a chipboard panel. If I paint only the front or just the edges, it tends to develop a curve. The back side is painted off camera. Next I cut a background piece just smaller than the panel. I selected this section for the car images, but they ended up being mostly covered up by the embellishments. I die cut another layer using this rectangle deckle die. To add dimension and a heavier layer to support the rusty pieces, I cut a piece of corrugated packaging. The cardboard is torn against a ruler to achieve nice straight edges. I fussy cut images ahead of time. It keeps my hands busy while I watch a little TV in the evenings and gives me a head start when creating projects. Off camera, I also added a little inking in places with brown and black inks. I'm inking the edges of all three layers with black distress ink to give definition. I also get the sides of the paper to cover the white center core. I hope you enjoy my creative process. I'll be sharing tips along the way. Something you don't usually see as I create is what's on the table next to me. I frequently grab for my craft tweezers and like to have scissors around in case I see something that needs trimmed as I go. A Teflon bone folder comes in handy as well. I tend to be too impatient to wait for my glue to flow down to the tip of the bottle, so I keep it upside down in a pretty mug. I also use Tombow glue for intricate pieces and line tape runner to adhere paper layers. I'm shaping the blades on this chipboard fan. I like to use Tombow glue for intricate things because it goes on in a thin line and remains sticky after it dries, so it doesn't flow out around the piece like liquid glue will do. So one of the first things I do is apply this glue to the more detailed gears and set them aside to dry. In order to securely adhere the background paper to the panel, I'm using line tape around the edges and liquid silicone glue in the center.
The liquid glue gives me time to position the paper, then once the glue is set, I can remove the paper liner from the tape. A pair of tweezers comes in handy for this task. I'll be tucking gears into the layers, so I'm using foam tape in the center, leaving the edges unattached, which allows room to place the gears. I'll be tucking gears into the layers, so I'm using foam tape in the center, leaving the edges unattached, which allows for room to place the gears. I add some extra glue on the tape facing the corrugated board, so it will be more secure. Attach a thin strip of chipboard to the back of the sentiment to give it more stability since it will be sitting on the corrugated board. Now I'm arranging the elements for placement before I start adhering them in place. My sister and I have a yearly date on the calendar for her town's annual community yard sale. Of course, I'm always on the lookout for rusty goodness, and she is quite amused at my reaction when I find it. I mean, who gets giddy with excitement over finding rust? I remember one time I found a wrench buried beneath some other items that was so old and covered in chunks of rust that it was utterly unusable for its intended purpose. The expression on the gentleman's face when I inquired how much he would like for it was priceless. He asked if I had a use for the wrench, and of course I replied that I would use it in my art. With a grin and a chuckle, he said he would be glad for me to have it and there would be no charge. I add chipboard to the back of the boots to raise them up and give more stability.
I used plenty of silicone glue on the rusty brake pad for a strong bond, but with this generous application of glue, you may notice it sliding around as I work. It's all good though, and it doesn't take long for it to stay in place. This man and his dog are from an older Tim Holtz paper doll set and remind me a little of my husband. They fit well with the classic gentleman images, both stylistically and in scale. Finally, I'm adding grungy texture by adhering little birdie ebony black microbeads, prills, and mini bronze microbeads from my stash using matte soft gel medium. Use a brush to dab on the gel medium, then sprinkle the beads into the gel, which will dry clear. Continue to work around the design until you have the desired texture. Thanks so much for viewing. Please click on the subscribe button if you're new to my channel and would like to see more content like this. Here are links to videos you might enjoy viewing. You can visit the Little Birdie Craft Store with a link found in the description below.